Hello everyone, guitarist Christopher Chip here and welcome to episode 3 of Harmonic Geometry. In this uh, particular video I would love to share with you some of the concepts that I like to use when generating interesting chord voicings. Uh, usually I refer to them as chord textures. Those are going to be three note uh, little harmonic uh, clusters, if you will, that we can use in between some of the most conventional voicings that we know when playing in a more harmonic uh, fashion and also when you're trying to fill more space uh, and just kind of paint with harmony, if you will. Uh, to illustrate this concept, I'm going to pick a, a key center. Uh, let's do this in C minor today. So I'm going to show you how I generate these voicings over a C minor 7 harmony and that will be a Dorian mode. So we'll have the natural 6, the 9th, and the 11th. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to pick the scale, right? C Dorian, it's the second mode of the B flat major scale. And of course, once you know all your modes all throughout the fretboard, we can identify in this third position of the guitar, if I start from the lowest possible string, that would be my G Aeolian mode. So C Dorian, the second mode of B flat major, it's exactly the same as G Aeolian, which is the sixth mode, a relative minor of B flat major. So I just want to have a, a pattern that encompasses all two octaves and fills all six strings. So here's the scale pattern I'm going to use to generate such voicings. I'm going to start on G. I'm going to play the B flat major scale from G, which is the G natural minor scale. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, if you uh, remember from our episode number two of this uh, video series, we did some intervallic work, and I'm going to start to play the scale in intervals of fifths. So I'm going to take this uh, G Aeolian or C Dorian or B flat major or whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to voice it in fifths. I'm going to play the entire scale in fifths. Now, once I have the scale in fifths, here is a little uh, procedure I like to do. This is something that I really like to play with. So I'm going to start to play the fifths and see if I can get to positions which allows me to have more than two notes sounding at the same time. I'm looking for three note voicings, three note uh, clusters if you will. So check this out, you just, uh, if I play the first fifth, there's no other note I can combine because the next fifth it's exactly the same set of two strings. So this is the first fifth of the scale, this is the second fifth of the scale, but they happen to be exactly in the same string set and so I cannot really use them harmonically. But if I go to the third fifth, the third fifth goes between B flat and F, which skips a string, it goes from the sixth to the fourth string. And so the previous fifth, one of the previous notes of the fifth, which was the note E flat, can stay as the other fifth is played. So I'm going to end up with this kind of selection of three notes from the mode, right? So one more time, I start with the fifth. I'm looking for combining different fifths together. I'm going to the next fifth, but they're exactly in the same string set, so I cannot use them together. And then when I move to the next fifth, the E flat from the trident I have here, A to E flat, can stay because that string is not being used. And now I can play, this is my first voicing that I can use out of this scale. Now, if I continue the same game, I'm going to go to the next fifth. So we left from B flat to F. Now the next fifth in the key is going to be C to G. That's going to be played on the fifth and fourth string, which means that the B flat that I just previously played from B flat to F can stay on the sixth string and gives me three more notes together. So here's the first voicing, here's the second voicing. Now, if I continue with those exactly same fifths I played earlier, the next possible fifth is going to go from D to A. Now that B flat still can stay. The B flat that was part of the B flat to F, it's on the sixth string hanging by itself, and so not, nothing prohibits us from using it here also in a three note voice. So if I take a look at the mode, the first three strings, sixth, fifth, and fourth, I can select these voicings. I'm really moving only fifth intervals, and this is fifth, 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 and fifth, except I'm always leaving 
one note in the string that's not being used from the previous fifth. So in this case, the note that was filling the fifth string was the note E flat, which was part of the A to E flat triton. And then in the other two cases, the note that's hanging out is the B flat because the C and G and D and A are both played on the fifth and fourth string. So, again, one more time, from the first three strings of the scale, I have three voicings. Now, so we have left here, if I continue going higher in the pattern, from here, the next fifth would be E flat to B flat. Now, if you remember, we finished on D and A, so the A can hang on the fourth string, because that string is not going to be used in the next fifth. So I can hold this note, move from E flat to B flat, and I have three more notes. All right, so we, here's how we start. Now, simply move to this part. Now, once we have it like this, now we are playing on the fifth, fourth, and third strings. We have moved a, a, a grouping of three strings higher. And so now I'm going to continue with those fifths. The next fifth in the sequence would be from F to C, which is played on the fourth and third string, which means that the E flat can still hang. So that gives me three more notes. And then if I move one more fifth in the scale, that's going to get me to G and D, which means that the E flat can still hang. So in these three strings, fifth, fourth, and third, I have these three voicings. And again, those are the fifths in the scale with always the note from the previous, previous fifth that can physically fit on a string that you're not playing also sustain. So, so far we have six voicings. So we left here, that was the G to D fifth, and now the next fifth is going to go between A and E flat, which becomes your triton again, right? And so now the previous fifth had the note D on the third string, the third string is not going to be used now, so I can sustain that note and play the A and E flat against that. So now I jump another set of uh, the, the, you know, the grouping of three strings higher. Now I'm between the fourth, third, and second string. And so now we have this selection. I'm going to move one more fifth in the scale, which is going to get me to B flat and F. That's played between the third and second string, which means that the note A can sustain. A was the one of the notes from the A to E flat triton we played previously. So I have this, and then I can sustain the A and move that, and so I have another voice. If I could deal with one more fifth, that's going to lead me to the C and G, and again, that's on the second and third strings, which means that the fourth string is not being used, I can still have the A sustained. So I have three voicings here. If I combine it with all the other voices, so far we have nine. So that's a great technical exercise to just be able to climb and you know use the sustain of the previous interval while moving the other fingers. So we're almost done here, and I'll show you how we're gonna use this. Then once we, we finish on this voicing, which was the C to G which was the last fifth, and we were sustaining the note A from the previous fifth. So now I'm going to go one more fifth in the sequence, which means I'm going to have to go between D and A. And so now the second string is not being used, and that's exactly where I had the G, which was the fifth from C. So I'm going to sustain that G and just move the D and the A against it. And now I am on the highest set of three strings, which is the third, second, and first. And I still have another cluster. And now I can continue to move with the very next fifth in the sequence, which would be E flat to B flat, which is going to be played between the second and first string, which means that the third.
first string can still sustain from the previous fifth, which was D to A. So I'm going to use a D, move the fifth higher. I have another very nice sounding voicing. And then I'm going to move one last fifth in the scale to finish, which is going to be between F and C. And it's also played between the second and first string, which means that that D can still hang. So now I have three voicings on the highest three strings, which is going to be this. So if I play now the entire scale again, one more time, this is the C Dorian, G Aeolian, or B flat major scale. And I harmonize it in fifths. until physically I get to a place where there's an opening so one of the previous notes from a previous fifth interval can be left over. So in this first case I play the first fifth, I only have two notes, the second fifth goes in the same set of strings so I cannot use them both, but when I play the third fifth that jumps one string higher between the sixth and the fourth string, which means that this note right here, the E flat, can stay from the previous fifth and give me the first three notes voicing that's based on this uh, quintal intervallic approach. From here I just continue with the pattern and I'm gonna have this. This is the full scale in fifths. Once I have extracted those, let me show you how the application uh, would happen. Since we know this is in C Dorian, essentially all the notes from this key, from the key of B flat major, are consonant against a C minor chord. In other words, if I play a very basic drop two C minor chord in our third position, all the notes of the scale are going to sound great against the chord. We're either going to have the one flat three five and flat seven, which are the four chord tones or we're either going to have the 9th, the 11th, and the 13th, which are the three remaining notes that spell out the entire scale. Regardless of which one of them it's played, all of them work great against the chord, because the minor 7 chord likes to have a 9th, an 11th, and a 13th. They're all consonant extensions. So here's the thinking. It doesn't matter how many notes you grab. If I randomly grab three notes, let's say these were three random notes that I'm grabbing out of the scale, at any one point, there's only a few statistical things that can happen. I can either have three chord tones, I can randomly grab three chord tones. For example, if I grab a cluster like this, I have a G, a B flat, and an E flat, all happen to be chord tones of C minor 7, the fifth, the flat 7, and the flat third. So that's one statistical uh, you know, uh, thing that can happen, is that if you randomly grab any three notes of the scale, they can happen to be all three chord tones, which would sound like a very strong voicing for that harmony you're trying to voice. Another possibility is you can grab two chord tones and an extension. That's also a possibility that can happen. So for example, the, the very first voicing we played has a B flat, E flat, and an F. Well, B flat and E flat are chord tones of C minor. They happen to be the flat seven and the flat third. And F happens to be your extension fourth or 11. So that's another thing that can happen statistically. It's still a great sound for a C minor because having two chord tones you kind of can paint an image for the chord and then having an extension to contrast and color the sound would be a great addition to, to that uh, texture. And then the other uh, element that can happen is you can have one chord tone and two extensions or you can have all three extensions. But in any case, there's never a situation statistically that can give you a bad sounding voicing for the harmony that you're trying to make. The reason for that is that the Dorian mode, I call it a bulletproof mode, because all its notes sound consonant against the hammer. There's no avoid notes, uh, if you will. So here's what we're gonna do. All these voicings that we just played, which are based on the interval of fifth through the scale, I'm gonna call C minor seven. All of them work as a C minor seven voicing. And I can very quickly spell those for you so you can see how that works. The first one is spelled B flat, E flat, and F. That can be a C minor 11. 
The second one is B flat, C, and G, a plain C minor 7. B flat, D, and A, that is going to be a C minor 9 and 13, because D is the 9, A is the 13. Then when I get to the next voicing, E flat, A, and B flat, simply a C minor 6 chord, because of the A. The next one is going to be spelled E flat, F, and C, so that's going to be simply a C minor 11, because of the F. The next one is spelled E flat, G, and D, which is simply a C minor 9, because of the D. The next voicing is going to be spelled A, D, and E flat, which becomes a C minor 9, 6, or 6, 9, because of the A being the 6 or 13, D being the 9. You can see, if I play a C on the bass, it's a very cool sounding harmony. Then the next one, I have the A, the B flat, and the F. Well, this is a C minor 11 with the 6th again, with the 13. And then the next one, should we do this one? Going hard. This one can be called also a C minor 6 or C minor 13 because it spells an A, C, and G. C and G are chord tones. A happens to be the 6. And the next one, this is spelled as a D, G, and A. So as a C minor harmony, D becomes the 9th or 2nd. And then A is your 6, so it's again a C minor 6, 9. And then the next one is going to be here. So now this is simply a C minor 9th, E flat and B flat are chord tones, D happens to be the 9th. And then the last one, we're going to go a C minor 9, 11. We have the note D, that's the 9th, the note F is the 11th. So you can see all of them fit perfectly a C minor, kind of little uh, harmonic uh, clusters or textures. So here's how I'm going to use these voicings. If I'm, I'm going to take two reference voicings. I'm going to have a C minor, a very basic C minor uh, 7, drop 2, in this position, which is something that sounds very rooted because it has the lowest note as the root. It has a fifth right away, so you can really hear that very plain C minor sound. Right? There's no, no way we're going to confuse this for anything else. And then I'm going to take one more reference voicing that I like. It's a very plain voicing. It's spelled the C minor 11. Many of you are familiar with this, I'm sure. It's pretty much root, flat, 7, flat, 3rd, and 11. That's going to be my next reference voicing in the, the next position. So with these two voicings, if I was to, to comp a groove or, or just paint on a C minor you know, uh, section of a song, I can do something like this. are very clearly C minor and they happen to both have the root as the lowest note and fit into uh, adjacent positions on the guitar. Now to move between them if I really wanted to get a very very smooth transition from one to the other instead of just moving the block voicing I can utilize whatever scale pad that I have under my fingertips in that position voiced in this quintal way and use those as transitional chords. So maybe I can play this C minor jump on a few of these voicings until I crawl up to this one. See how that works? Basically we have many more places to step and many more kind of harmonic hues and harmonic shadings to use to really fine-tune our sound as to exactly where we want to be in the harmonic spectrum, right? So again, this, this kind of approach works great if you're trying to unify a few different positions in a smoother... concept over the fretboard and be able to play with the same harmonic density and texture in any given key in any position the best thing to do is to apply this concept to every single one of the scale patterns or mode uh, shapes that you know 
And so to illustrate this concept, I'm going to take the key of B flat, which was the same key that produced our C minor 7, a G Aeolian, C Dorian, um, again, same thing. And I'm going to voice all the modes per positions in that fashion, so it gives hundreds of possible harmonic options. Uh, so here's the, start with the Aeolian with it. So we have these voicings. C minor 7 voicings. So again, you're going to end up with hundreds and hundreds of voicings. Then here's B flat major scale. This is a great one. And then we're going to go to C Dorian. So we're going to come here. Those of your fingers, in terms of technique, right? So then we're gonna go to D Phrygian. Then we're gonna go to E flat Lydian. It gets a little bit harder to feed your fingers here, but it's still a great exercise. possible to do mixolydian here because uh, it's too, too, the, the angle for the hand is too uh, hard and so I'm gonna move mixolydian all the way to the first position and so here's F mixolydian. The mixolydian covers some very cool voices. Or C minor 7. So the greatest thing to do is to practice this is to take again a reference chord, it can be one reference chord in this case, taking a basic C minor 7 drop 2 and I'm going to be moving maybe two different modes around it. So I'll play C minor 7 and then move a few voicings from the G Aeolian mode and then again the C minor 7 and move a few voicings from the F Mixolydian mode. So. So thanks so much for watching this and uh, hope you get uh, some ideas to apply to your own playing. I'm going to continue in episode number four by showing you how now we can apply these true changes uh, because there is a way to translate every single harmony into a specific mode or key that has absolutely no avoid notes against the harmony, which means you can use any combination of notes modally uh, as harmonic uh, clusters or expressions. So.